If you keep lifting your head at the last second just before you hit the ball, then I wanna help you with that in this video because as you already know, it can be quite a difficult problem to try and fix. So I want to explain why that is as well as give you solutions and things that you can work on to hopefully address the problem. Hopefully you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it'd be much appreciated if you could do that as well. So keeping your head still through contact is a tricky topic, but we're gonna start with the easier solutions and then work through to the more complex things. Because the easiest solution to help you keep your head still through contact is to focus on it. The reason that you're not doing it is because you're not focusing on it properly. You're allowing yourself to be distracted by other things. Because realistically, if your life depended on it, and all you had to do was keep your head still through contact, you would do it every single time. But because you're concerned with where the ball's going and maybe you're thinking about other aspects of the technique, you allow yourself to get distracted by those things and you lift your head. So the first and the most simple solution is just focus on it 100%. But unfortunately in tennis, most things are easier said than done. It's a nice idea, just focus on keeping your head still and it will work. But in reality, there can be other things going on that are making that much more difficult. And one of the big ones is gonna be your spacing. If you get too close to the ball, it creates a physical challenge. So instead of making contact out there and being able to keep my head still, or making contact out there and being able to keep my head still, now I'm getting jammed and there's the physical shoulder coming through, there's a, a limitation. It's a physical restriction that makes it really hard to keep my head still if I'm gonna be hitting myself in the face with my shoulder. So often players need to fix problems with spacing and setting up in the right position before they stand a chance of really being able to keep their head still and stable through contact in the way that they want. And the other really big one is timing. And timing's even more of a problem, and it's a problem for the vast majority of players, except for really high-level players. Generally, we want to be meeting the ball, making contact out in front of the body on most of our shots. It can't always happen if your opponent hits a great shot, but we want to be doing that most of the time. If we don't do that and we're hitting the ball late, again, that can create a physical restriction. And especially if we're too close to the ball and we're hitting it late, now our body is really trying to force our head out of the way. And if we're trying to do that while we're moving, that makes it very difficult physically to keep your head still on contact. So both of those things often need to be fixed by players before they can keep their head still on contact. And then that brings us nicely onto a really important talking point that we need to address. And that is the reason that you probably want to keep your head still through contact is because you're making too many errors. And you think the reason that you're making an error is because you're lifting your head at the last second. And that might not be the case, because although I think it's very important to keep your head still or to at least work towards it, we have to accept that some of the best players ever hit amazing shots very consistently while looking down the other end of the court. There are countless videos of Murray doing it, of Djokovic doing it, of Sinner doing it. So it's very possible to hit great quality forehands while looking down the other end of the court, which means potentially and probably the reason that you're missing your shot isn't because you were lifting your head, that's just what you're blaming for it. There's probably other things going on that are causing you to miss your shots. And the two things that I've just mentioned are two of the big ones. For players, when they get too close to the ball, they don't get set up in the right position for the shot. That's a major underlying reason why players make mistakes. And it's actually way more important for you to focus on fixing spacing issues because tennis shots are sequences of events. You prepare, you set up in the right position, you then swing, you then make contact and keep your head still. So that happens towards the end of the stroke. If you're setting up the wrong, uh, the wrong distance from the ball, you're out of position for your shots, it's actually much more important for you to focus on fixing your preparation and your spacing first. I think about, you know, keeping your head still as something that you should focus on as kind of an end stage thing when you don't have too many other challenges within your game or within or when you're trying to kind of 
maximize performance right at the end. But if you're in the process of improving, there's probably other stuff that you should think about. And timing is gonna be exactly the same. Timing, other than getting set up in the right position, is the hardest thing in tennis. Every single shot is different. You have to start your swing at the right time, you have to make adjustments. And if you don't time the ball well, if you hit the ball late, that's another massive, massive reason that players make errors. So focusing all of your attention on fixing issues to do with timing should, in my opinion, be much more of a priority than trying to keep your head still for the vast majority of players. And with all that said, we now need to address the ultimate elephant in the room. And that is that in order for you to keep your head still through contact, in order for you to fix spacing issues, in order for you to fix timing issues, there are physical requirements. You need a tremendous amount of hand-to-eye coordination. You need to be able to read the flight of the ball, predict where it's going, so that you can react quickly, prepare, and set up the right distance from the ball. If you can't read the flight of the ball accurately, you'll prepare late and you won't be able to set up the right distance from the ball. You also need to read the flight of the ball in order to be able to start your swing at the right time. You need really high levels of coordination in order to be able to time your swing so that you can meet it out in front. And then just purely on the ball tracking scale, of thing or scheme of things you need to have a visual system that tracks the ball well you need to have the coordination the balance in order to track the ball with your head through to contact and the brutal reality is that most adult tennis players have limitations within their visual system within their balance system within their coordination system that are preventing them from keeping their head still or fixing the other issues that they might need to fix so if you really want to improve your game if you want to be more consistent because that's what this is really all about then you're most likely going to need to work on your body in order to fix those underlying problems, make yourself more skillful so then you can keep your head still, do all the other stuff and play a higher level of tennis more consistently. And if you would like help with that, that's one of the big things that I teach tennis players how to do. I help them with technique, I help them with tactics, but what I mainly focus on is teaching players how to use brain-based training to become more skillful. And I'm holding a free live workshop really soon. I'll place a link to it down in the description. In this workshop, I'm gonna be teaching you how you can use a brain based training to make yourself more skillful to improve your hand-to-eye coordination and by doing that it will enable you to fix a lot of the problems that you're struggling with right now including keeping your head still through contact so i'll place a link to that down in the description click on that it'll take you over to a page where you can learn more and register if you're interested if you have any questions about what i've talked about here kind of how to think through what's going wrong within your strokes how to think about watching the ball through to contact leave me a comment down in the comment section i'll get back to you as quick as i can Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.